I'm Charlie Behrens, and this is The Dark Side Of. Today we're looking at fraternity life. Now you might think fraternity, I get that. It's, it's parties and maybe it's networking. But there is an underbelly that you don't often see. And sometimes it goes too far. A makeshift memorial of flowers and candles is placed outside the Kai Tao Fraternity House for Matthew Carrington. Police say the 21-year-old Chico State student was in the basement of this house taking part in a fraternity event at 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. It just makes me sick that they didn't think. They didn't think something's wrong. So why can't someone say stop? I say, guys, he's bleeding out of his mouth. He's dying. He's dying. Today we're talking with someone who's been there and survived. This is the dark side of frat life. Let's kind of start with what you were thinking when you went into the Greek system. What were you looking to get out of it? Matthew and I both thought that joining fraternity would help us make new friends and further our careers in the future. At Chico State, it's a small school, probably about 20, 25,000 students. The Greek life is what it seems to all circulate around. For me, I, I just didn't see who wouldn't want to be a part of that. What's it like choosing the fraternity for you? There's parties, you know, one of the houses brought strippers. They, they go all out. Once you're kind of given the invite and you decide to join, the initiation process really is to weed out the weak. They want to make sure you earn your way in, but also they kind of want to put you through hell. When you're two, three months in, you know, 150 days in, it takes a lot to walk away. You obviously reached your boiling point. That was the beginning of hell week. That's basically the last week before you're initiated in. This was in the middle of winter in Chico, so it gets about 30 degrees at night. They cut out these cubbies in the basement. That's where we slept. They also flooded the basement with about eight to 10 inches of water. And this is where the majority of the initiation or the hell took place. And eventually almost everybody broke except for it was just two of you at the end. We started off with 30 guys, and Matthew and I were the only ones left. They stripped us down to our boxers and our t-shirts, and they told us to hand this five-gallon water bottle back and forth while drinking. They would quiz us on the history and the members, and if we got it wrong, they'd tell us to drink or pour this water on ourselves, or they would have us put it down, come off the bench, and do push-ups or sit-ups. And the, the water comes up to your, you know, your mouth while you're, you're working out. You're submerged in water. And this went on for six, seven hours. I think we started about 8 p.m. And it went on to 3 a.m. They were having us do, do push-ups. We got one of the questions wrong. And um, Matthew collapsed. And he started to have a seizure. I remember that he had his tongue stuck between his teeth and i was of course terrified and, and really worried that he was gonna bite his tongue off so i put my finger in between his teeth to release his tongue and he bent down so hard i started to bleed at this point i'm telling all the fraternity brothers i'm like he's having a seizure call the ambulance we need to get help two of the guys said no, no, it's fine, he's sleeping, he's just passed out of exhaustion, don't worry, we're EMTs. They, they reassured me that they were, you know, medical professionals. Once Matt was snoring, they, they pulled us out of the water, gave us sweaters and, and had us sit on this couch. But with whatever energy I did have, I was saying, I think we should call an ambulance. But they, they let Matthew sleep there for about an hour. I was next to him, his head was on my lap, and I was going in and out of sleep. I was trying to stay as awake as much as I could to monitor him. But that's when he started to, to bleed out of his mouth. At that point, I said, guys, he's bleeding out of his mouth. He's dying, he's dying. While he's bleeding out of his mouth, I'm doing CPR, and I'm, 
and finally they they called 911. When the EMTs got there, they went right to work and took over. But I saw them working frantically to to keep him alive, and and I just I, I knew I knew he wasn't gonna make it. Just the look on the emergency workers' faces and and how scared they were. We got the call uh, with the news that. Uh, Matthew had died. Ultimately, what Matthew died from was hypothermia and water intoxication. I called his mother, Debbie, and, and gave her the news that her, her son had passed away. That was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my, in my life. What happened legally? Did anybody go to jail? I believe four of the fraternity members ended up going to jail. One of them receiving a year for involuntary manslaughter. And I believe the other one's getting six months. So people did go to, to jail. What impact did his mom have pushing forward legislation? Matthew's mother, Debbie, did a lot of work on Capitol Hill and there's now laws called Matthew's Laws, and they deal with hazing, and now it's a, a felony to, to participate in hazing. It haunts me still to this day that if I would have got up and, and walked out or grabbed Matt and walked out, he would be alive today. Don't let Matthew's story be in vain. I have a brother, he's college age. We have to stand up to this kind of thing. You have to be the one to take that step, to realize that you are just in somebody else's game and to refuse to play along because no game is worth a life. I'm Charlie Behrens and until next time, this is The Dark Side Up.